can Tom Jonas comes back in immediately? Yeah, yeah, Tom will come in if he gets through everything that he needs to get through between now and, and game day, but yes, he's certainly come back in, he's our captain. How much has he done since he's been back from health and safety? Uh, not a lot just at this stage, but uh, there'll be enough. He'll be, I mean, we're really comfortable that he'll be fine. I mean, we do all the, all the health checks that we need to do as well as anything else, and Tom was one of the um, one of the people who has been quite lucky with anything that he's had to deal with. Fantasia sat as the medical sub. Are you confident enough to now bring him straight back? Yeah, we're comfortable enough to know that he's got some conditioning now that it'll, that'll allow him to play. Clearly, last week, you know, without the game, we we took him with, as uh, you know, with a plan. If there's any minutes, it was going to be a bonus, but uh, that didn't happen. But we trained him really strongly after the game, and he's had a really good week. So yeah, he'll be in the he'll be certainly in the 2023. 20, what else are you considering at selection? Um, oh look, uh, we, we get Trent Dumont back available as well, so we've got three or four boys that we think are a part of our best team at the moment and we'll uh, work really hard to um, get them into the side once we get through training today. You know Cadinia Park better than most. It's been a long time, but it, yeah, I still know it. Do you, do you get trapped into playing the ground there and forgetting to play the opposition or is it, how do you handle Cadinia Park and Geelong? Oh no, well we, everyone understands the unique challenge of, of Geelong at Geelong. It's, it's, been a fantastic team for, for almost feels like forever and um, uh, we just got to go down there with our, um, our, our eyes on our game and, and the way we've played and the way we need to continue to play and you know we'll, we'll give ourselves a great opportunity I mean Geelong at Geelong is a challenge but you know um, every side is capable of beating any side in, in any place I think. Do you need to adjust for the ground and skittiness of it? No not too much I think that might be a trap if you get if you get caught in trying to adjust too much to what the ground everyone talks about the ground but the ground it's not that much different to a lot of other grounds. You know, certainly a little bit tighter, we all get that. Ken, where are you sitting with Charlie Dixon? Is he likely to, to come back in or another game in the sample? No, Charlie will play in the sample. Yeah, he'll definitely play in the sample. We'll go up to Loxton and have a game and um, we'll make sure we give him the best chance. I mean, Charlie's, you know, the comparison between Charlie and, and even Orazio, they're quite different. I mean, Charlie's hasn't quite been as smooth as we'd like on, on his recovery, but. Uh, Ratio has had a pretty smooth four or five, six weeks in fact, so Charlie's just building a little bit more. How is how is he going in general though? He said he was probably after that sample down. How would you say he's had at the moment? He trained really well Tuesday. He's, he's optimistic, I reckon, around the way he feels. He he has got just, uh, you know, he's got a big body that's got to carry around on that ankle and uh, it, it's going to take him a little bit of time to just keep moving with it. But we think, we think we're really getting really, really close to when he's ready to go. But we I've said this for a couple of weeks. We want to give him the best chance to be successful when he plays and we just need to be a little bit patient. Uh, it's hard hard sometimes to stay in the patient spot, I've got to say. Is it easier that means to... one more? I don't know what that means. The reality is Charlie's performance will show a little bit of the way he moves, the way he pulls up. It won't be just won't be about how many marks or goals or anything like that he kicks, it's just the way he gets through physically because we know he's an AFL player, I've said that a number of times too, he's, he's clearly a very, very good AFL player and you know we, we want him in our side as, at the right time, but the time has to be when Charlie can perform like he needs to perform. Is it easier to hold until he is right because of the way the other forwards are playing for you at the moment? Yeah, it certainly does give you some, some opportunity to get him right and you know, you never want to be... Regardless, you shouldn't probably be forced and rushed, um, but in the reality of AFL football, sometimes you, you maybe feel that pressure to squeeze, but at the moment we're in a position where um, you know the, the three talls are playing playing pretty well together, so we get a chance to get Charlie right. Do you feel you've been crystal ball gazing that it's going to be five and five? Or? No, I don't. Um, it feels like it's a long way away still. You know, it's funny enough at, at, at where we are now, it still feels like the challenge we've got this weekend is, is as big as the challenge has come, and um, you know, we've had some really good recent history with Geelong. We've had some really tough, hard games of football and, and I expect nothing less than that this weekend. How would you say you're going, obviously, four, four wins in a row, how would you assess where the team's at compared to where you'd like them to be? I think we're, in, we're, we're working every day to get better. I think that's what we've done from the time we were, regardless of where we've been, whether that's zero and five or zero and three or, you know, four and five, we, we just keep our focus on what we need to continue to get. We're not perfect by any means, if, that, if that's the question, the way we're playing, but I think we're, you know, we're continuing to build, but we'll do that day by day and hopefully right up until the end of the year. I'm trying to work out to where, where you were at 0 and 5 to where you are at 4 and 5. Have you seen plenty of signs, do you think, that, that you're on the way to being where you want to be? Clearly they're better signs, they're much better signs, you know, when you, you've, uh, you've been able to get some wins. But as I said before, we at 0 and 5, we weren't we weren't as bad as zero and five looked and felt, but we knew that's what we had to live with. So we had to we had to stay in stay in the moment and stay in the in the day-to-day the -day 
get better, get better type attitude, and we've been able to turn that around a little bit. Is one good start enough to convince you that you've sorted through that issue? Um, no, I, I think if we reflect on starts every week, the, it'll probably be continually reflected upon, but it's a part of the four quarters, and we just need to make sure at the end of those games that we've done enough over four quarters, whether they're in the first 10 minutes, the last 10 minutes, or the middle the middle of a game. We've just got to continually focus on what we do well in every moment of a football match. And Sometimes we'll get good starts, sometimes we might not get good starts. We, If you ask me about my preference, is we play well right from the very start and we play well all the way through, but that doesn't always happen. Are you convinced in your own mind as to how to set up in defence, considering the threats you've got at Geelong? Convinced is yeah, convinced is no problems. You understand our play. We understand our own players. We understand our strengths. We understand the challenge of the opposition. Now, those challenges are real and they're big, um, and particularly big with the with the Hawkins and Cameron scenario. And then you know they're bringing Rowan back in as well. So um, you know there's there's some significant challenges with with any team, and, and Geelong's are, are clearly exposed. But you've got to be able to stop them. What have you made of Geelong's form? Oh, in really really good form. I think the competition, if you ask, you know, the consistency of the teams is the competition's close. The competition is really, really even. I think, you know, I think clearly Melbourne separate themselves a little bit, maybe Brisbane, but the rest of the competition is so, so close and, you know, you've just got to, you've got to stay in the moment and, uh, you know, Geelong, are, they're where they always are. They're in the top eight. It's just what they do. So you're ready to decide which Valier and Cleary go to which Hawkins and Cameron? How do you work through that? Sometimes that's decided by them, sometimes it's decided by us and, you know, and, we like, to, we like to position our players where they need to be to give ourselves the best chance as a team. And I'm sure Geelong are doing something similar. So it, there's always that little, that little movement piece at the start where you're trying to fight the battle a little bit. Okay. We'll get them where we need them to be as best we can. So they prepare for both and then work out themselves at times which ones they stand on? Yeah, that's exactly what will happen for us. It's, it's, no, it's not necessarily anyone locked into any player. Um, we just need to make sure we get the matchups right with the people who are down there at that time, whether that be Geelong players or our players, we've got to mix and match regularly. Your young midfielders against older experienced midfielders, how much of a challenge do you think they face on that one? Yeah, they've got some younger ones too, I mean Parfit and Narkel and people like that who are playing through their midfield as well, so they've got you know got a good mix of some younger players coming through, Nevitt's another young player that they played, so um, it, it'll be, one thing you know about the midfield against Geelong is you know it's going to be a contest. That's what we expect. You were an assistant coach last time Port beat them down there in 2007. Do you remember the match at all uh, when you were coaching against Port? <laughs> I do remember a little bit of the match. I remember Dom Cassisi kicking a fantastic goal, I reckon, and Dom was in the club during the week, so that makes me remember it, because so, he told me about it. So <laughs> That's about what I remember, but at, uh, at the end of it, it's, 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 a, it's a fond memory that maybe we'll look back another time. Ken, obviously it's the federal election this weekend. Have you advised your players to vote at pre-polling and check they've done that? 100 percent we have, yes, they've done, done that and uh, hopefully they've all got that all ticked off, which I'm sure they will have done very well, because it's a very important day for our country. A significant round as well. What are your feelings through Indigenous round? What does it provoke in you? Uh, it's, a, it's a round that I have an enormous amount of pride in. I think it's one of the rounds that, that as the AFL, we do a lot of different rounds. This is the one round that, for me, I think I really look back and, and, and fondly wait for that round to come upon us and you know the, to see the the jumpers and the jerseys and of all teams every club we often say we do it really well at port every club does it incredibly well now we're getting better as a society we're better educated and we've still got a long way to go but um, indigenous round is an amazing part of our football season one of the ones that i love the most does it help you with cultural awareness within the club as well yeah i mean as a footy club we've we, we hope and think that we do it pretty well and we're strong in that space where our players, um, you know, we get to learn a lot about their stories. I mean, Lockie's, the jumper that I got on today is Lockie's story and his, his grandmother's story and how fortunate we are that Lockie Jones is at our football club and, you know, lo lots of the stories that come out of it culturally, you know, we've had Paul here over the journey too. We, we've got such good knowledge, but we've got a lot more knowledge to gain. Do Lockie or Sean speak to the playing group at all in the lead up to a round like this? Yeah, Lockie spoke about the jumper and the meaning of the jumper and his grandmother and, you know, it's, it's around her where she was born and where she, where she now rests and it's a, it's a fantastic story that you, you know, you, you'd love to hear. I mean, you can't get enough of them in my view and the boys share them regularly.